Hi everybody, this is Rose of Sharon, and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently finished Josephine Tay's Daughter of Time. And actually, according to the leaflet on the back of the book, Miss Tay, if I can get to it, excuse me. says that she used two pen names during her writing career. Josephine Tay, who is also her Suffolk great-great-grandmother, and Gor Gordon Daviet. Yeah, Gordon Daviet. And actually talks a little bit about her life. And sadly, she died in 1952. Not much is really known about Miss Tay, but her... Her legacy still remains intact in her books, and I'm thinking The Daughter of Time is her most well-known one because, of course, it's about the War of the Roses, the Red and the White. Of course, you probably know about the Lancasters and the Tudors, but anyway, um, it's interesting because history concedes Richard III was a monster. Well, yeah, it's true. Um, he was a monster, but... However, it doesn't state that he killed his nephews, but some scholars concede he did kill his nephews. They kept him lock up, locked up in the tower, and it's the um, Grant, the main character Grant, he is just compelled by this mystery that history has left to us, and he takes a deep dive into it and discovers that despite the fact that Richard III was an inconceivable, inhumane beast, that he did have some redeeming qualities. Shock of shocks. But I love this book. I thought it was absolutely exceptionally well written. The mystery of it, the history of it. It's great historical fiction. If you're into the War of the Roses or what started the War of the Roses or Richard III and... Why Richard III was such an um, unlikely candidate to become royalty, <laughs> given his um, deformity. And it's interesting because Richard wasn't really born with any kind of ailment. And the hunchback actually developed later on in his life. He had a lot of problems and he was marked by suffering and it's not that he didn't deserve it i'm sorry i'm i just i don't have any real um <laughs> sympathy towards the man um but he was interesting he was a very interesting man um just a abhorrent slime ball <laughs> sorry but that's what richard was and i'm calling it as i see it um I don't really want to say that much else about Daughter of Time without giving too much away. I'm afraid that I already did. But it is a spectacularly written book. All too short. And I am going to be donating it to Half Price Books. So this is very well kept. And I don't know if it's the first printing. It's written in 1988. Actually, it says the cover illustration was done by... Um, Pamela Patrick, and um, actually I want to see, I want to do a little bit of investigation here. Um, it says, okay, let's see when it was written, 1951, hmm, not long before she died, so I, it's really sad, um, I don't know if this is the first printing. It doesn't say. First Collier book. Oh, this is the first Collier book edition, 1988. Okay, that's why. That's why. The original uh, manuscript was written in 1951 before she died. I guess the rights were um, given to Collier Publishing to publish it in 1988. So that makes sense. But that's about the the gist of what I wanted to say about the book in and of itself. If you're into historical fiction, or mystery in this case, is actually, we call it historical fiction mystery, I would highly, highly, highly recommend it because it was 
fantastic. But that's all I have to say. So until next time, live long and prosper. Ciao, Titi.